morning, everyone. This is a poor call, as we know, for a little worship call. Amen? So just before our minister comes, we will join in worship. It was
Greetings, my brothers and sisters. We will be having the procession at this time, so I ask you please to stand with me. Those are responsible for the peace, close the cast. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe as thou this. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the day. Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return to them. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand up latterly upon the earth, and go after my sick worms, destroy his body. Yet in my flesh shall I see God, and I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed with the wind. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside me. My flesh and my heart fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Amen. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here to celebrate the life of a true champion of God. We gather to celebrate the life of Sister Ida A. Kiam, a true champion, a true warrior for Almighty God. I want to pause at this time to tender condolences to another champion, Brother Kiamu, as along with the rest of the bereaved family. I have heard so much about Sister Kiamu, and everybody is telling me about Paul Paul and the champion that she was. Both for young and old, she was an example and an exemplar. And we just give God thanks for the life that she had. I want to, as I say, send her condolences to the bereaved family and to let you know that it is not only a bereaved family, but it is a bereaved church because she was near and dear to this family here at the East Super Road because of my church. I didn't know her as well as I should, and that is merely because I gave her COVID time, and you know, it has been such, and she has been mostly well. 
But believe you me, she's one of those persons that I truly wish I had a good long relationship with. Because she seems to have been such a charming and such a godly person. Our prayers are with you, my brothers and sisters, and family members. My prayers are with you. Trust, and we know that God will keep you in His love and in His mercy and in His care at this time. I am going to be asking the praise team at this time to lead us in the song, How Great the Lord, as we open this great celebration to the glory of
I just I want you to just worship God because I'm sure Mr. Popo would want everybody to come and worship for the honor and glory of his name. So let us see it as indeed a celebration. And if you feel like you the spirit bids you to run, you go on and run. And if it bids you to shout, you shout. And but just worship the Almighty God. Because that's what I know she would want to do. Welcome to you all brothers, sisters, family, friends. I don't know if there is any minister that we need to recognize um, at this time. But we want to recognize all the members of the church and pastors council and their wives who are here. And we recognize our own um, associate pastor, Reverend Jennifer Brown. And from her you will hear much later on as she had a long association with Sister Campbell. And so she has a lot more to say on her behalf. But my brothers and sisters, as we continue the celebration, I want to uh, ask at this time, um, Bricklet, ask for to come and do the, the first lesson first taken from Psalm 90, 1 through 12. And immediately following that, we'll be having Kimberly Sinclair, grand niece, who will be doing a selection. Thank you so much, and we ask you to just leave that video. Yeah, God bless you as we come to worship. Good morning, Lord. She was everything and I still wonder here to my heart. 
and I'm holding my head out and saying it as well. I'm kind of for a country to which I
rule the land. I just love that song. Because it speaks to what will happen in the tomorrow of the Christian's life. My God, I'm looking forward to that. Can I say don't worry? Papa, she is better. And I'm not saying you must cry out because you need to cry if you want, or how long bad if you want. But for heaven's sake, don't cry because you think that anything bad has happened because her death is her going home to be with the Lord. She's in a better place, better off than we are right now, and we just bless God for the light that she lived. Beulah, I'm longing for that. The Pope will be the last for the time she's done. And we are happy for her, my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much, um, Sister Aspel, uh, Sister Nisa. Um, but that was good diction and good reading. God bless you. Thank you. Um, as we continue, to the celebration of the life of a champion. We continue with the second lesson that will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51 through 58, uh, Vanessa, Vanessa Chisholm. And then we'll be having a few, come on in, stand on. Hold on here a little, Ms. Chisholm, Ms. Chisholm. So immediately after her, we will be having um, for the camp. We will be coming to do um, a tribute, and then followed by Leonard Morris, means Floyd Powell, men, and Richard Cobra. All right. So we will be having you in that part. Will you please do so for us? Go ahead, Ms. Chisholm. Good morning, everyone. Brother Lanty, 
and sister Cam were brothers and sisters in the Lord in this church here. She was about something like about six or so here older than me in this church. When I come to this church here in 2019, I was here and I saw this woman and uh, both of us were looking at each other. But it was the second time for us to talk. <laughs> but you know, coming into a strange country and these strange people, Maybe your eyes and your mind are set apart, not knowing about things that are going to change. But uh, when it comes to a time when we sat down and we talked with each other, and this fear that. I 
and the poor community every time. Where I told you what, anything we have to work, and not here to work, we have to be hospitalized. I don't that. Now, we have to be in the appointment. So, it's not an easy road when a man married to a woman to go to God in and to carry out. Anyway, she was a, and you know, and she had the special and the diabetes and then she ended up in the hospital twice. When she go back to the hospital, I know that it they are fighting by the wound, the champion. The wound, the wound is of uh, a kind of cancer. And then they have a period of they go to the wound. And then in 19, you know, in 2000, in 17, they go and sit about the wound. And the doctor tells her that she will always feel a pain. In the end, we are
mom and my aunt and I used to attend this church when it was a tent. I can remember my mom and my aunt all getting hot sun cooking every time there's a convention or a church function. So I know my aunt is happy that her last or she stayed is in this church. Today, we are here to celebrate my aunt. And the thought that comes to mind is that God looked along in his garden and saw an empty space. He then looked down at her and saw my aunt. Her weary body, her painful legs, and her tired face. And he put his arms around her and lifted her to a place of rest. I miss my aunt. Although we were miles away, I can always shore up a phone call from her. And her voice was very strong. Annette, give me somebody dinner then. Uh. And I said, how are you? And she said, my knees, the pain in my knees, all the pain. Another time, she called my husband. Um, they like each other, they have a team going. And he said, well, I'm there, my friend. And he said, how are you? And she said, all oh, my knees, the pain in my knees. The calls from my aunt were joyous. When she talked, it was like she was having the best days of her life. My aunt was sick. She had arthritis, which leave her knee bone to bone, chronic diabetes, and high blood pressure. But despite her sickness, she never complained. Her mobility was sicker to none. There were many things my aunt could have complained about, but she did not. My aunt was a happy person. My aunt knew a lot of people, and she communicated with all of them. Far nieces and nephews in England, Canada, United States, back in Florida, and even my schoolmates. My aunt spent three months with me in the States in 2016, where she had a good time. She was there with my mom and my dad. And if you know those three, there were church in my house every day. There she was able to attend my brother's wedding, where she had a good time, a time she was grateful for. I used to go to church, and in the States, she met people from this church. And if you knew my aunt, the conversation went on and on, as if it was yesterday. And my mother. If her head hurts, my aunt would cry. She was a passionate and caring sister. This is a lot for her and my uncle. She was their company. They couldn't help each other because of sickness, but their daily phone calls from each other were their comfort. I knew angels in heaven is happy to have her. And to my cousin, Richard and Rosie, Uncle Campbell, we mourn your loss. She fought a good fight. She lived a Christian life, and I know she's in God's garden as one of his brightest souls. My aunt, you celebrate your life and your spirit. Your memory is on in our minds and in our hearts. We are grateful for your time here with us. You touch many lives, but we know you are at peace. My aunt, your death separates us physically. We are here with sadness and gratitude. We will not forget your smiles and laughter, and we were in pain. May your soul rest in peace. Minister, thank you.
give me a hard task, but I will try to come on. To the officiating ministers, to ministers present here, platform party, family members, friends, well wishers, good afternoon. Brother Campbell just preached a sermon. You put the kettle on it. And that is the message I have here this morning, or this afternoon. For me, another one of Adam's children that have fallen asleep, but particularly another one of Altman and Paul's children have died. Today we need to rest a mother, which is Rosie. I can't forget the show. Richard! Rosie! I want to pick you there! That will live on in my mind. Today we have lost a grandmother, my great grandmother. She took pride in being a grandmother. One after an instant, I think. Her name is spelled S E D E. I don't want to pronounce it because I always put it incorrect. And I remember she being on Washington Boulevard. And I remember each time I come there, she would fill her with anarchy and some praise in front of me. And the poor young girl who stood there blushing, that was my aunt. She was a person who gave praises to her grandchildren. And she also prayed for them. Today we need to rest a sister. When it comes to my aunt and my dad, you could expect calls from her. I remember one time she couldn't get it, but when she did call me, she said, Clyde, you hear from my brother? And I was trying to console her, but then she said something. She said, I'm a little brother. And it dawned on me that she brought my memory to Manchester to Clarendon when they traveled as little children. And then I understood that no matter how old they were, my aunt probably close to 80, my father was 78. For her, they were her little, her little one that she had to protect. Today we need to rest an aunt for all my cousins who are here. We can speak volume to that. And I want to say that for me in particular, she filled my heart with stitches. I took school there, and I would take a reprimand. And one thing I can say is that, well, I can you lost precious life. Today we lay to rest a friend to many. Today we lay to rest a neighbor. A minister, if you will allow me, today we lost a minister. Yes, she didn't go to theological schools and she didn't have a PhD and so forth. She was a pastor. But in her own right, she was a minister, a minister of reconciliation. Many ministers will never have that. And she taught me what minister of reconciliation is all about. She wasn't perfect, but my aunt believed in Romans 12. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. That was her philosophy. Today, we lost someone that I believe that have allowed the Spirit of God to work in her heart. Because if it was up to her and, and, and self, she would never call. But she called simply because she allowed God to work in her, His will, and to do His good pleasure. Today, we lost not only a minister of reconciliation, we lost a great one. But guess what? There's still hope. Because we can allow that legacy to live on in our hearts. The legacy where she would call, and when she called and reprimand and scold, she would do it in such a way in Ephesians 4 2 3, with gentle meekness, with the aim to cause one to repent. But in repenting, her hope was that we united and always endeavoring to keep the peace. And so I close with these thoughts on my mind. And this is the words that came to me. One day, God will make everything new. One day, he'll bind every wound. One day, the former things shall all pass away. One day, there'll be no more tears. One day, God will make sense of it all. One day, every question resolved. One day, anxious thought will be left behind. No more fear. Because one day, when we all get to heaven, 
what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. One day, one day, we will shout and see the victory. Everyone, I look so sad. <laughs> My mother was never a sad person, you know. So the ministers, ministers and friends, those who are viewing online. I am Richard Kubri. Um, My sister, Rosie. I'm sure you have all heard her names. The head and the prize bull, and that's where the words know. My mom said to me, um, when she passed, she knew nobody come cry. She wanted bright colors. Take her back to her church in Easter Park Road. She wanted to have a convention. Everybody must dance and sing and yeah. And she said, I'm going to go back to the country because I'm not blown this out. Okay, I'm going to go back to the middle of the side of the year. Okay, I'm going to go back to the country. Time would not allow me to speak of my mother. In 2019, I took the decision to come back to Jamaica to spend Christmas with her because I have not spent a Christmas with her since Christmas 2005. So I said, all right. I need to go and spend some time with her. Let's she taste the cooking and all everything. So it was a moment for me because I wanted to return to my roots. Those persons who knew me, even from this very church, as a tent coming back. Somebody said, you know what? And I can't for nobody, you know. I mean, I have no problem for nobody because sometimes people traveling back give a sense of false hope to persons living here. Things that when they are gonna live big life and we have everything. Some of me have to take a load, you know, and all of the problems there to come here to see the figure. Anyway, I'm not going to do the free. He said, but the other guys will be your mother. So this one perfume. So I buy the perfume. And for me, normally when I'm traveling back to this country, the egg my sister Rosie knows, whoever is picking me up, and nobody else. My brother-in-law picked me up that, that day and um, we went to the house and she was so ecstatic. Oh, you're going to kill me every time you, you know, tell me, say, come, you're going to kill me. Yes, and it was a pleasure for me to come back, make her a Christmas breakfast, had the family over, Christmas dinner. So I said to her, I said, you try any prayer for you, man? She said, no, so I said, yeah, open it. So I went in the room to open it for her. So, for those of you who are familiar with fragrances, yeah, I bought her a Dolce and Gabbana. Yeah. And if you know what it looks like, it's not the word, but the initials, that's on it. <laughs> so, I'm going to go with fear, you have to be. Me never know what's a DLG in perfume. So, we had a good laugh. And that's just one of the things about my mother. She had a great sense of humor. I was thinking of one day leaving from this church, and everybody who knows 54 bus used to run from Barbican to Maxwell Avenue. That's the bus we take to go home. And everybody knows that that was full of pickpocket. That the bus full of pickpocket going to Maxwell Avenue. Took the bus, the, 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 the transit van down, you know. And somehow this big pocket managed to pick our purse out of our bag. And I think me sit down in the corner, I don't know if it was there, but all I remember that my mama looked round and see this man had a come out of her purse. And she goes, so, Give me purse! <laughs> I don't know when that man come out of the bus. And those are some of the things that I can remember about my mom. She loved to cook, she's full of life. The first time I saw the 1976 diary, I'm thinking, Mom, this is old. But anything you want to find is in that diary. 1976 
blue cover. My mom loved people. In England, most people work for agencies. And now I realize that my mother was the first agency who I knew because in our house, along with my aunt Andres, she went back to the country and there were so many people she brought back to find work, to live, to... She was that person, she loved people and she gave. She ran a great race. She helped so many in the community where we grew up. Everybody knew Antonis. And by the way, it is not an incorrect spelling on the program. Her name is not Nez. Her name is Mez. But because everybody's an Auntie Nez, she doesn't work with it. So I won't take up much time. But as a befitting tribute to my mom, one verse. Could we within the ocean fill over the skies of parchment made where every stone on earth
all pop as we listen to these great tributes. God bless you. You know, the more we hear about her, the more we shall know her some more. Because you really see, you know, I heard and somebody who said once that you know the person that had passed on was so nice. So winsome in her character that if the undertaker was sorry when she left. I guess this is, is something like that. She had such a personality, such a quality life that everybody is just so sad. But we thank God and we celebrate because we know that she has gone to a better place. We can celebrate because of that. We're going to be worshiping in giving and in singing at this time. We're going to be asking the praise team from the ushers to position themselves. The praise team is going to lead us. But we're all going to sing lustily and to the glory of God because we're here to celebrate and to worship and pay our last respect to our friend, Sister Paul. The Lord's my shepherd and Lord what he makes me down to life. In pastor's green, he leadeth me, the wild waters high. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives in me.
It is in you that we live and move and have our existence. We honor your name and we thank you, O oh God, for the quality of life that your daughter lived. She did not only live long, she lived well. And we give you thanks for her life. God, as we, your people, have given this gift, as we celebrate her life, we pray, oh God, that you will receive these gifts. We pray that it will be used to bring furtherance to your kingdom and glory to your majestic name. So bless every single one who has given today. Multiply it back in accordance with your word. And God, we ask you ultimately that in all things your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise, Praise God. Praise God. Can I invite you to stand? We are going to worship the Lord today. I remember Sister Popo called me from St. Anne one day. She said, Sister Lawrence, you know, remember me, but I'm Sister Popo. Remember to pray for me. Remember to call me. It just came back to me when I sat there. Well. We have to sing. We have to rejoice today. Won't it be a time when we get over yonder? Won't it be a time when we get over yonder?
Hallelujah. Praise God. I know it's a powerful feeling, God. Hallelujah. Praise God. My brothers and sisters, we continue the worship experience. We continue the celebration as we ask the Eastern Park, Park Road, New Testament Church of God to come with a tribute. And then we will be having another tribute immediately following that by Delroy McCarthy. And I see open tributes and I'm believing that we are giving a spot for one more person. So we ask the New Testament, Eastern Park New Testament Church to come right now, then Brother McCarthy, and one person who you want to identify yourself who will come. She will come in the day after darkness. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to extend my condolences to the entire family. Popo was as much my family as your family. I loved her dearly. We had some good times together. And um, Brother Campbell, yes, I know that you deeply missed her. But like the song just said, don't be grieving. Yeah. But cry if you have to cry. But she is in a better place. Hallelujah. Tribute for Sister Ida Campbell from the Eastern Park Road New Testament Church of God. It was the wise man Solomon who articulated very poetically a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a of God that caused her to join the family at the Eastern Park Road New Testament Church of God more than four decades ago. Since that time, she has lived an exemplary life and served her church faithfully. Although a seemingly reserved person in terms of her personality, her love for the Lord and her devotion to his service and his people her love for her pastor, her cell group members, while she resided in Washington Gardens community, was quite evident. Her encouraging words to those who attended those cell group meetings will long be remembered. And I must just pause to say that Sister Campbell was a part of the first cell group that we had within the Washington Gardens area and that in itself was instituted just before Pastor gave us the commission to have the cell group. So God indeed was doing a mighty work in her. Her very sense of humor endeared her to many. For 42 years, she watched and prayed. Today, based on the life she lived, we believe she's at peace and rest, no longer enduring a body rocking pain and disease. Her heart was with the triumphant poor, and in that area she served with distinction and she never took her eyes off the goal. When in 2020 she relocated to Ocherios, her attachment to the church where she received Christ remained strong. 
and she became an ardent online worshiper. As her health began to fail, she knew she had served her Lord faithfully, and there was the coming a time when she would be free at last. She would be free from all pain. She would be free from all discomfort. She would be free from all the limitations that att attended humanity. And she would be changed from mere mortal to an immortal being and join the one to whom she had dedicated her life. As we pay our last respect to her today and celebrate a life well lived, we will miss her, her sense of humor. We will miss the dignity with which she lived her life. We will miss her faithfulness and we will miss her fellowship. To her relatives and friends, we say today, be consoled by the fact that she lived a good life. She lived a life that we believe was pleasing to the Lord. She fought a good fight. She kept the faith and she finished her course well. So we say to her today, sleep on our beloved. Sleep on and rest in the arms of sweet deliverance. Thank you. Will be made to the end. Your one. 
the Lord is coming to take us away to be with Him in glory forever to stand. The long nights will be handed, the day is at hand when we'll be well.
happen and we give God the glory for all that he has done. Praise God as we come to the, the final segment. My brothers and sisters, let me just pause and, and welcome. I know that there are persons here from the Ultra-Rest New Testament Church of God. That's all. Praise God. Just hold up your hand and let Praise God. God bless you. Praise God. I know that might be because of um, Sister Oswald. Um, what is Sister Oswald? Oh, praise God. And also, and of course, Rev. Rev. Oswald would not be able to be here, but he spoke with me. But we're delighted to have you. God bless you. Could I, could you permit me to also welcome Brother Sam and Sister Sam, the really two veteran of the church, and they had a marvelous time with Sister Paul. Hold up your hand, Brother and Sister Sam. God bless you. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. And these people like you set the pace for us that we can have a church like this that we give God the glory. Amen. We will be having the church choir. They will be coming. Are you coming up to sing? Are you staying there? You're coming up. Well, come up while I talk. So they will be coming to um, sing at this time, my brothers and sisters and friends. Um, immediately. Oh yes, the eulogy is is to be done. So just. Hold on a little bit, it doesn't mean we should come out and but let us have it. Let us have the eulogy. So just hold on a little bit. Hold the brakes a little. Let's have the eulogy. Um, we just want to go by the program. We don't have to, you know, but let us just run with the program. And so, um, Mr. Kobe will now do the eulogy. And of course, then immediately following that, we will be having on our church choir. Many of them are persons who had great association with Sister Pau Pau. And then the woman of God, Reverend Jennifer Brown, our associate pastor for this church, somebody who had a marvelous relationship with Sister Pau Pau, will be coming to present the word of comfort to you all. So it will go like that, my brothers and sisters. So we will have Mr. Um, Kubrick now. We will have the choir next. And then um, we will have the woman of God as she comes to break the world. God bless you and thank you. Amen. I'm back again, is it? OK, now we'll have the eulogy for Ida May Campbell. Ida May Campbell, born Ida May Powell, was born in Spawn in Manchester on July 10th, 1939, to parents Altman Powell and Floris Powell. Ida was the third child for her mother and the first for her father. Her early childhood education began at the Garnogi Elementary School in Cumberland, Manchester, where she resided with her family. Eventually, the family moved to Sunbury District in Smithville, Clarendon, where she attended the Smithville Elementary School. Not much is known where further education is concerned. Ida had two children while still living in Clarendon. Not much is known or remembered about her early life growing up in Clarendon as well. Oh, sorry, as we all know, that data and social media was non-existent in those days. Only letters and telegram. Uh, when you get a telegram, everybody start crying. Uh, but I don't know the telegram, but the beeping start. <laughs> Ida moved to Kingston to pursue a, a life in a different environment, a 
and seek new challenges. She worked many jobs, but the, though, but the ones that meant the most to her was working in Ryan's restaurant in Halfway Tree. Domestic work with the Minot family and the legendary cricketer, Morris Foster. She had a passion for cooking, and if you had the opportunity to heat from her kitchen, you'd be craving for more. Either added two more children to her family while living in Kingston, of which I'm one of them, and the end. Ida gave her life to Christ in 1981 and was baptized on Good Friday that same year in this very church. She attended this very church for many years and asked that when she passed, that, she, that this church would be the place she would want her celebration of life to be held. She also brought my sister and I to attend this church when it was just a tent. She was a very creative, she was a very active member of the church. She sang in the choir, always at fasting, and was involved in all aspects of the church. She would participate in the annual prior mountain on Ash Wednesday. And she would take a list of all the names she can possibly remember and pray for them. She was a woman full of life and laughter. You would have a dull moment around her. In the community of Nelson Road, where she resided for the better part of 30 odd years, she was known by almost everyone because she never ceased to encourage anyone she met on her daily commute about giving their life to Christ. She was a selfless woman of God who demonstrated her love for people through the many lives she touched, moved, and inspired. She was very informed about present events and those of the past. Many of us would be at a loss because Eda kept the family together. If you ever ask her for any information, she would take out that famous 1976 diary and unleash the information you needed. Eda got married to Ashley Campbell. Eda traveled to the United Kingdom in 1992 where she spent six months with her brother and extended relatives. In later years, she also visited the United States with her sister and spent a long six months on holiday. Back home, she was always on the move, visiting the sick in hospital, and paying her last respect to federal services. She was diagnosed with diabetes some years back, which required her to take insulin on a daily basis. Due to this illness, she also lost, lost sight in her left eye. It also affected her knees. Her leg became an issue which restricted her from moving freely due to the constant pain. She was unable to attend her beloved church. We know even a family member living close by, my sister and I took the decision to move her from Kingston to Great Pond, Porterius, where she was closer to her daughter. In her new surrounding, she quickly became a favorite with the locals. I often wonder how one person who was so restricted managed to create such great and wonderful relationship with her neighbors. She celebrated her 80th birthday with her family and her new neighbors, which she enjoyed immensely. About two years ago, we had a scare when she was hospitalized for having a low blood sugar. We thought it might be a good idea for her to have a smartphone which would provide easier communication with her and others. She complained at first that she was not sorry, she complained at first that she couldn't use it. However, as time passed, her phone became her new best friend. She was now able to connect with the outside world with WhatsApp. 
This enabled her also to log on to the Sunday morning service in this church and even able to watch other services also. Women read the news, women read and listen to the news and current affairs of what is happening in Jamaica and around the world. Mo had a minor stroke a few weeks ago, which meant she had to celebrate her 84th birthday in hospital. And she requested that the staff sing happy birthday to her. That's just how good she was. She was discharged on July 12th and sent home. She was, she was rushed back to the hospital on July 13th, unresponsive, and sadly, she transitioned on July 14th. 5 a.m. in the morning. She survived her husband, Ashley Campbell, daughter Rosie, son Richard, grandchildren Shadi, Michael Aspel Jr., Mia, Kemar, Paula, Lisa, brothers and sisters, niece, nephews, other relatives, and friends. Hida ran for a race with the fear of God and in grace. She is now resting in the arms of her Savior. I trust her soul is resting in peace. God bless you. Thank you so much, over son.
please receive the woman of God, Reverend Jennifer Brown. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, I greet you well this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Always for me a good thing. Whatever the circumstances may be, it is always a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. For his mercies endureth forever. And I want to say this afternoon, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. For his mercies endureth forever. Just like to greet Reverend Clark, our moderator and pastor of this church and all the members of the church and pastors come to work here, the family members and those who are watching on live stream and those who have come to celebrate with the family, I greet you well this afternoon in Jesus' name. I'd like to use this opportunity to say condolences to the bereaved family on behalf of my own family. I'd just like to let you know that we are praying for you. And of course, we're just a telephone call or prayer away. Sister Ben Winter, it's absolutely good to see you in the church along with your family today. So long we have not seen each other, but it's really nice to see your smiling face. Yes. And Brother Campbell, please be reminded that we as a church along are praying for you and family. Rosie, it's good to see you. Nice to be smiling under these kinds of circumstances. But death, my brothers and sisters, for the child of God, it's not a loss for heaven. When someone from the body of Christ goes home to be with the Lord, for heaven, the angels await with shout of acclamation yes. to welcome a saint that would have lived a life for Jesus and is gone home to be with the Lord. So I say to the family members of Sister Campbell, go ahead and cry if you want to. Go ahead and weep if you must. But the word of God encourages us. We hope today that as family members you are not weeping like those people who have no hope of seeing Jesus. But as you weep and as you mourn, remember that as Brother McCarthy sang earlier on, one day, one day the final sunset when it lies beyond the mountain. One day we will hear his last call. One day the final trip will be made to the graveyard. What a day, Reverend Clark, it's going to be when my Jesus I shall see. Oh, when we look upon his face, the one who saved us by his grace. What a day it's going to be when death shall be no more. Oh, there's not going to be any more sickness. Glory to God, no more death. For the form of things shall pass away. And all the trump of God shall sound. Ah, oh God, for a church uh, at Eastern Park Road, we have been bereaved, Rev, over and over. In the last month, uh, we have buried so much persons right here. And uh, tomorrow, we have two more of 
our brothers and sisters to lay to rest oh god in the country area we are just as bereaved as you are as family members oh what a day when the dead in christ shall rise first and those of us who are alive and remain my god shall be caught up oh what a day it's going to be, so I bring your attention to the scripture that I want to read. It's taken from 2 Corinthians 5. And I'll just read maybe three verses. It says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens for in this we groan earnestly desire to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven if so that be clothed we shall not be found naked this is the word of the lord thanks be to the lord bless thy words unto our hearts and glorify thy name and the church say amen for the next few minutes i won't keep you long at all my brothers and sisters for tents everybody know what a tent look like we put them up all over when it is we want to do something we use tents whenever we have outdoor crusades for a long time. And so, my brothers and sisters, we're aware that a tent is a temporary structure. It is something that can be relocated whenever we need to. A tent is a weak structure. It has no proper foundation like a building like this. A tent is frail, and a tent is easily destroyed, and of course it is capable of relocation from one place to the other. My brothers and sisters, Paul, the writer of the text we read, reiterates or informs us or enlightens the body, the physical body, a tent, lightning as something that is weak and frail, something that can be destroyed, something that can be relocated, something that is exposed. When you put up a tent, it is exposed to the rear and tear of the wind and the sun. Very often when we erect a tent, Sometimes when we go back, a part of the flap is gone. It is ripped in two. We have to patch up the tent or take it down and put up a, a new one. Oh, God Almighty, so Paul lightens the structure of the human body as a tent. Something that is frail. Something that is going to be destroyed one day. Something that is capable of moving from one place to the other. Oh my God, what the scripture says. However, he says that if this house, this frame tent that you live in, oh God Almighty, this temporary house, can I say to the family, can I say to those who are listening, that the body that you have is a temporary house that you live in. Oh, great God Almighty. And he said that this temporary house that you live in can be destroyed. Oh, God, we are aware that the temporary structure that Sister Paul Paul lived in has now been destroyed. My God, it has now been relocated. Oh God, but it says, although we are living in temporary structures, Reverend God, we know 
We are not ignorant of this fact. He says, although we are living in a temporary structure, and this temporary structure, like the tent, can be ripped in two. This temporary structure, like the tent, can be ripped apart. Oh God, he says that we know, my God Almighty, that after this temporary structure has come to an end, we have a building not made with hands, eternally existing in the heaven. Hallelujah! That this temporary structure that we walk around with, my brothers and sisters, today it is strong, like you are sitting, my God, but tomorrow it can become sick, God Almighty, Sister Powell. We have been together for many years. Ah, she's just one of those persons, even though relocated to St. Anne. We keep in touch. She would call and we would pray. She, she would never miss a service, even though she was not physically present with us. But ah, uh, this old body that she had, ah, uh, God Almighty became sick. My God Almighty, maybe some of you sitting in the reach of my voice, you're looking all dressed up and looking very nice, but underneath that dressed up, you could be very sick. Somebody talk to me, the, 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 the structure, the tent that you're living in is under pressure. Oh God, it is groaning, high blood pressure sugar, diabetes, cancer, or some other kinds of sickness. But Paul says, we know, we know that after this temporary structure is destroyed, we have a permanent building, a permanent structure. We have a new body eternally in the heavens. Oh, somebody praise him. One day, my brothers and sisters, our earthly house, like Sister Powell, and I'm not talking to her today. She don't need to 